So is Aaron Rodgers a playoff choker? It's something that people have very strong opinions about. And I've actually made a video about this already, but I'm going to make another one because I feel like that video I kind of got too into who's better in the playoffs, Brady or Aaron Rodgers, which eh, that's not really what the argument is. The argument is, is Aaron Rodgers a playoff choker? Because his detractors will say he is absolutely terrible in the playoffs or he chokes all the time. The reason the Packers can't win a Super Bowl is because of him, not in spite of him. His fans will say it's the Packers who are choking. He actually plays awesome in the playoffs. And so it's very fascinating, and we're going to get into all of it. Uh, so the first thing we have to talk about with this is something that I'm sure you've heard is specific stats that look very impressive for Aaron Rodgers. For example, a statistic like this, which if you look at the all-time passer rating in the playoffs, he is sixth on this list. And you can look at a couple other guys and say, oh, you know, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, you know, they have really good numbers, but they're young. So they played in a more passing era when this happened. That definitely gets inflated. You know, you could even maybe argue that Kurt Warner and Matt Ryan had a couple of deep runs, and that's why their numbers are so high. Same thing like Matt Stafford. Burt Starr being number three is absolutely absurd. I have no explanation for that. But Aaron Rodgers at six, you can make an argument for he's one of the best playoff performers in football if that's the only statistic you look at. However, it's not quite that simple. Some people love to say, oh, numbers, they can lie all the time. You gotta, you know, you gotta just watch the tape because numbers lie. Numbers do not lie. Numbers definitively tell you what they're supposed to tell you. You can use those numbers to mislead, and out of context, they can be very misleading, but the numbers tell you what they're supposed to tell you. That is Rodgers' playoff passer rating. But again, it's not that simple because one of the things that Rodgers has to his benefit in terms of passer rating is how often he plays worse teams in the playoffs. He, his team has not made it further into the playoffs as other teams, and we'll get into if that's his fault or his team's fault or just luck later on. But as of right now, sticking on the first point, if you look at his passer rating per round, so you're going to notice a 93.9. So, okay, solid, not spectacular, but solid. The divisional round, it jumps up to 102.6, which is actively good. And then uh, in the conference championship in 80.3, which is not very good, quite frankly. Now, the Super Bowl being over 110 feels awesome. But again, worth mentioning, that's a one-game sample size. He played in one Super Bowl, so he was great in that Super Bowl, according to passer ratings. So give him some credit for that. But that's simply where he's at. If you were to look at, you know, if you applied this to last year's passer rating leaders in the divisional round, he would have been currently seventh in the league. His wild card round... 93.9 would have gotten him 15th in football and then the 80.3 would have had him all the way at 28th in football but again you can't really do that right as I'm sure Rodgers fans are now screaming you know at their television or whatever they're watching this on and it's a very true point which is in the regular season of course the numbers are going to be worse than in the playoffs that's you know exactly how it works is you play worse teams in the regular season but that's also why Rodgers maybe struggles more in conference championships than in divisional rounds we just play in tougher competition that's the case of everybody you know no matter who you say for the most part they're going to play better earlier on you know in the wild card round or divisional rounds than in the conference championship or Super Bowls and Rodgers you know again it's a one game sample size he does have a great Super Bowl on his resume that's something you can't take away from him yes it's a one game sample size but it's a game where he won the Super Bowl so it's a pretty good sample size but that only tells us so much I think we can get into more detail here because yes the passer rating okay what does that tell us it's hard to say exactly and unless you really go through each players uh, you know passer rating from each of these rounds over the past you know several years it'd be really hard to figure out exactly is that good is that bad and passer rating in general isn't a perfect stat it's not a bad stat it'll get you in the ballpark but the reality is that there, it's a results-based stat if you throw a bad pass that ends up getting you know caught anyways in return in a touchdown you know because of a great wide receiver play it still you know benefits your passer rating there's a stat where that doesn't happen, and that is PFF grade, which is admittedly, uh, you know, some people love it, some people hate it. I like it. So we're going to use uh, PFF grade now to talk about how Rodgers performs and how Rodgers performs against the rest of the league in specific rounds. So here we go. What you're looking at here, this chart is so, you know, from column left to right, we're going to have which round it is. So wildcard round, divisional round, etc. Then the average. This is how well the average quarterback does over the past three seasons in each round. 
We then have Rodgers, so how well Rodgers does in each round, and then the difference. Uh, so just the difference between how Rodgers does and how his peers do. So for example, in the wild card round, the average quarterback posts a PFF grade of 71.1 on average, whereas Rodgers on average posts a 70.4 grade, which is slightly below average in the wild card round, interestingly enough. Now the divisional round really is where he thrives. Uh, so the average, and what you're going to notice is the average quarterback pretty much plays the same in every single round, which I actually have a theory on, but we'll get into that in a second. So the average quarterback averages a 71.8 grade in the divisional round, but Rodgers is 6.7 points higher at a 78.5. The conference championship, which his, you know, passer rating wasn't great, but his PFF grade is still above average here. It goes from 71.6 for the average quarterback to 74.3. And again, worth mentioning, this is the average quarterback that's playing in the conference championship. You're not getting a Nathan Peterman at this point. So that is worth mentioning. Super Bowl, again, you see a massive jump with the Super Bowl, but that's because, like I said, one game sample size, you're going to see some massive outliers there. Uh, but still, again, a, a 91.6 grade for that one game that's why the asterisk is there because it's just one game but it's an impressive game so in total the you know average was low 70s you know in between 70.7 and 71.8 so in between that one point gap for all four rounds Rodgers' total grade was 75.8 which is 4.4 points higher than the average player i think there's several ways we can go with this we can sit here and say listen Aaron Rodgers' PFF grade in the regular season is typically in the 90s. Now he's in the mid-70s. That is a drop-off, and it's a drop-off that's significant. The other way is I think you can definitively say, well, he's not bad in the playoffs. I mean, he does perform better than the average quarterback does in the postseason. So you maybe can make the argument that he's not as good as he should be given how good he is in the regular season. And that's, a, again, an interesting argument that I want to talk about at the end of this video. But it's still fascinating. As for my theory, I you know led you, I told you about a little bit earlier in this video for why the uh, PFF grade was so similar. I think some people might say, "Oh, does it mean that you know PFF does do a good job at kind of taking the other stuff out of it, right, and just grading how good a player is?" And so maybe that's an argument in PFF grades' favor. It's possible that's the case. I would actually probably guess that you, your PFF grade does go down when you play a good team, but also there's worse quarterbacks earlier on. I mean, you know, you had some like bad Ben Roethlisberger game or a bad Ben Roethlisberger game in the wild card round that's going to bring the average down because even though there's also worse teams in the wild card round, there's worse quarterbacks in the wild card round. So it kind of evens out. And to me, that makes sense. So while it's certainly weird that Aaron Rodgers has a negative differential in the wild card round, I think it is impressive that he has a positive differential in the conference championship and Super Bowls, even though Super Bowl is a small sample size. He still has a positive differential in those games if you include them all together. And to me, I think that is impressive and is an argument in his favor. I actually think this chart for me personally, just takes two narratives completely out of the equation. One is that Aaron Rodgers is secretly a great playoff performer, which I've just never really uh, agreed with. I think usually those are numbers that are looking at bulk box score statistics, uh, something like a passer rating and an over, you have to have a certain amount of games, but he obviously benefits from that of being able to play in uh, you know earlier rounds, which do improve his passer rating a lot and also just playing in a passing era, whereas some of the greats did not get to do that. But at the same time, I think the other narrative that to me this crushes is the idea that he's a playoff choker. He's not choking in the playoffs. He's still playing above average. Again, to me, choking is actively having bad games. And he doesn't really have any horrible games if you use PFF grades. My last chart is going to be this one. So GWG, I couldn't figure out a good acronym for this one, but this is going to be games with grades. And so it's games with grades in each specific spot. So 90 plus, how many games uh, do you have with over a 90 plus PFF grade in the postseason? The average quarterback gets a game with a grade of 90 plus. 12.3% of the time, whereas Rodgers is higher, 14.3% of the time. Not massively higher, so the elite games, he's not going over, above, and beyond, but I think the other two categories here are really kind of the impressive categories, in my opinion. Games with a grade of minus 70, the average playoff quarterback has a grade of minus 70 in the postseason 45.2% of the time, but Rodgers is just 38.1% of the time, 
And the real impressive stat for Rodgers, and if you're a Rodgers fan, this is what you will use, is that 19.2% of the time, a quarterback in the playoffs will have a sub-60 grade. Whereas Rodgers has, at no point in his career, had a sub-60 grade. He's gotten close a couple times, but not even that close. Like the, the worst grade he has is a 61.9 grade, and some of these minus 60 grades get a lot worse than just 59. So to me, that's really fascinating. The On one hand, Rodgers, I think it's fair to say, like only two percentage points higher in terms of the 90-plus grades with games. And you'd, you'd probably like that to be a little higher. You probably would. The flip side is literally no games with a sub-60 grade, which I don't know who can say that uh, out of the star players. Not many, and certainly not many who have played in as many games as Aaron Rodgers has. And my first thought is, okay, that's very fascinating. But when I started thinking, I was wondering, is there a chance those two things aren't coincidental? Is there a chance that there's actually a reason for why he might not get that many more great games above average, despite the fact that he's obviously a well above average quarterback, but at the same time, he gets no games where he really costs his team the game. He He's not someone who you can look at a specific game and say, he didn't give his team a chance. He gives his team a chance every game. Uh, and I had a theory. Uh, this is just a theory. It could be wrong. But, you know, I have heard people talk about the fact that in comeback situations, Rodgers sometimes doesn't do as well as other star quarterbacks does due to his risk-adverse style. There's evidence to back this up. And I would say as a whole, he is someone who has a risk-adverse style. He's not going to force the ball through a tight window. He'd rather throw the ball away and live to see another down. And that's what keeps his turnovers down, and in the regular season, that absolutely works, and in the playoffs, it's still got him a Super Bowl. So I'm not saying it's a bad strategy by any means. It's a good strategy, but it's possible that in the postseason, it can do multiple things. The first of which is it prevents him from having a horrible game. He's always going to keep his team in the game at the very least, even if he does have to throw the ball away a lot, just simply due to the fact that he's not going to you know, put himself and put his team in a deep hole. The other issue is that maybe he can't claw out of a deep hole the way other guys could, or maybe I shouldn't say he can't, but it just he can't do it as consistently. In the playoffs, especially in later rounds, games are going to be closer, and so because of the fact that games are going to be closer, maybe there's situations where he has to make a comeback and his style is not built for that. Maybe. That's, again, completely a shot in the dark that that could be something or just simply when you play in the playoffs you play better teams where there aren't as many windows and so due to his style uh there's just there's not going to be as many wide open guys to throw to and he's going to throw the ball away more and just that causes his grade to go down a little bit because again you could definitely make the argument of like listen dude you're consistently putting up 90 grades in the regular season you can't now be posting 75 grades in the playoffs that's a totally fair argument I think, but it's also worth mentioning everyone's grade is going to go down in the playoffs. You play better teams. Uh, maybe it's possible that Rodgers has more of a dramatic shift there, but I really can't say that for certain. I don't know. I, I, there's not strong enough evidence for me to definitively say that. I would probably guess that. That's probably what my leading theory would be, but at the end of the day, he still had plenty of good playoff performances. So I think both narratives are overblown. I think the Rodgers is secretly awesome narrative is overblown. I think the Rodgers secretly sucks in the playoffs, or not secretly, but just Rodgers sucks in the playoffs. That's also overblown as well. And no, uh, he's not as good as he is in the regular season in the playoffs, but most people aren't, and he still had good moments. That's kind of what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.